Hello, this is Jamaica 5288, and I'm going through the jungle. That is my garden. I'm stepping on stuff, y'all. So today, we're not going to talk about any of this. We're going to talk about basil. We're going to process this basil. Now, I know this basil is organic, and it's never been sprayed because I grew it from seed, and I bought the pack. Now, you may be saying she's bragging, but I'm not. I just want you to know you can do this, too. This is Jamaica 5288, and today we're going to talk about this beauty right here. You see that? It's basil. It's about 54 degrees out here, and it's getting a little cold, so I need to preserve some of this basil because this, this is good for nausea. So we're going to dehydrate this. We're going to harvest it. I'm going to show you the pack of seeds that I got it from. I planted it from seed. Did not buy it from the store because it was way too expensive. Why should I buy? I'm not going to get into that. Why should I buy expensive? A seedling when I could get a pack of seeds for 25 cents at the Dollar Tree. Just saying. They are not heirloom seeds, but you know, to me, basil is basil, right? So I planted these recently because I heard it fight it off. Fought, speak English girl. I heard it fought off. So we're gonna, we're gonna um, harvest some of this basil and we'll pull it inside and we're gonna dehydrate it, okay? So just a second. Dehydrated basil, yay, for basil tea. Okay, I hope you guys can see me. Um, I admit that it's not as bright in here as it could be. Um, and I have those lights in the back, but that is not doing anything. So we have this basil here, and my chickens, they've been eating the basil. Now, I know you guys, a lot of you guys, and they broke off one, so I'm going to cut this one off, all right? Because we're going to dehydrate this. We're not going to dehydrate the stem. We're going to dehydrate the leaves. So I'm just cutting off leaves. That's what I'm doing. I know. I know y'all ain't got time for that. It takes too long. Well, I ain't got nothing else to do. Well, I do have to plant some trees. I got a lot to do, but I am a patient person. That, that is an invaluable skill. I'm just cutting off the big ones. not trying to strip the plant i just want to get a whole bunch of leaves because this once you dehydrate this stuff once you dehydrate this basil oh and i forgot to show you this is the pack of seeds i got it from the dollar tree i don't know if i have any more seeds in here yep i put them in a little baggie see that let me get close see that i put them in a little baggie but they're from the dollar tree they're 25 cents and this is the exact set of seeds I got this plant, all these plants. There's one, two, three of them in here. They grow. I have been buying bags of herbs and they, I mean, a little sprig of basil is $1.98 now. They're taking advantage of us. I mean, where's that sprig I got? Where's that one? This, this is a dollar ninety-eight. I don't like being taken advantage of. Oh, another thing is that I go into the supermarket, and this happened twice. I'm just gonna start going to Costco's because I can't be so bothered. I bought a watermelon. I go to the grocery store early in the morning. Do you know they charged me a dollar? Not it was supposed to be. A, I think it was supposed to be. Um, I forget how much it was, but it was a hundred and two dollars for a watermelon. And I looked at my receipt because I was like, okay, I know I didn't buy three hundred dollars worth of food. I looked at that receipt. One watermelon was over a hundred dollars. So I said to the little girl, and I called the little girl. She was a grown woman. I said, you need to fix that. That is a watermelon. One watermelon, $100. Inflation is high, but it ain't that high. Y'all check your bills. Because when you're buying a lot of groceries, you don't really pay attention to how many times they're scanning or what they're scanning or what they're putting in. One false code can cost you a whole bunch of money. Or maybe it's coming from, you know, the guys who coded it added a zero to the amount it was. To, to what it was because watermelons are not sold by the pound they're sold um 
by the watermelon. Then it happened again two days ago. So I went and got, and this is this was something that, that, that it just irritated me because I asked the girl. I said, and I didn't buy that much stuff because I feed my chicken spaghetti occasionally, right? I supplement their feed with rice and then sometimes I do spaghetti. So I get these 99 cent packs of spaghetti. I got eight of them. She rang up more than eight. So I asked her, how many did you ring up? Because I, I was listening to how many times she was pressing the repeat button and it seemed to go over eight. And she says, no ma'am, I'll put eight in there. So I go outside and look at the receipt and it was 10. And it's not that it's just the $2. It's just the fact that I asked her, you know, how much, how many did you ring up? And she told me eight. I go outside, there's 10 on the receipt. You know, I went back in there for that $2. I went back in there and I said, you know, I'm not in, I'm not being petty or anything, but I, what irritates me is that I went all out of the way out to my car. First of all, I asked this lady if she rang up eight and she said she did. Then I go outside and it's 10. I said, you all need to go. They said, well, ma'am, we'll give you back the money. I said, and if you think I'm a liar and I'm just being petty, I'm a crazy lady, you have cameras over all of these registers. Just run it back. How many people is she doing this to? Nickel and diamond. You know how much money they can make if they ring up 10 instead of eight every time somebody checks out? And you know, some people go for big shoppings and we're all just trying to make ends meet. And they're, you know, they're, they're nickel and diamond us. I, and I, you know, just because of that, then this is the second time. First time was the watermelon for over a hundred dollars. And this time it's just like $2 over. And I said, you know, how many times have I went? Cause when I go in there, sometimes I buy about two, $300 worth of groceries. Cause I shop with the exception of the watermelons and the vegetables. If I go there once a month, I spend that much, if not more. And they're gonna nickel and dime me. So, you know what I do? I have a Costco membership. And Costco, they count those jokers before you walk out the door to make sure you ain't stealing from them. And I'd rather stand there and have those ladies count my items at the door, because they do it to everybody, or they check for specific items. Sometimes they count, sometimes they just check to see, like if you have, they look at one item, they look for it on the receipt. I'd rather have them do that than to have these people either overcharge me $100 for a watermelon or nickel and dime me, you know, when I go through there. I don't know. And, you know, I just started catching on. This old man told me a couple of months ago that they did that. And I was like, no, no, he's just, you know, he's just a crazy old man. Nope, he was right. You better watch some girls at those, those uh, checkout counters. They don't care. It's not their money. They're getting paid minimum wage, and if they make a mistake, but, you know, what, what What got me is that she blatantly lied. She knew she rang up 10, or she didn't care. Anyway, I went in there, and I was like, I need to see a supervisor. Cause this, I said, what irritates me is that I asked her, and she lied. She knew she she rang up. She, she didn't care. She just kept ding, ding, ding until she thought it was 8. Or she just assumed I had 10. And then when I asked her, did you ring up eight? Because that's all I have. She said, yeah, I just ring up eight. He apologized. I'm so sorry, ma'am. You know, sometimes we get busy and they make mistakes. I said, no, this wasn't a mistake. Because I asked her. She could at least, I, sh I should have looked. But I was uh, distracted because I was like, my iPhone, I looked at my purse and my iPhone wasn't in there. I was like, oh my God, did I put it down somewhere? And then I thought about it and I said, I think it's in my car. So I kind of rushed out of there. When I got to my car and saw my iPhone, clarity came. I said, let me check this receipt, see if this girl, I won't call her something else. I want to call her a young cow. If she did what she said, she did. She said she did. Sure enough, she lied. The only one you can trust is God and sometimes yourself because your mom plays tricks on you, but mm, don't trust these people. So we have a whole pile of, of um, basil. And I still have my basil plant that I'm going to put back outside to get it together. I done sprayed myself with a bunch of insecticide and now it's itching. So we're going to go over to the dehydrator, okay? See you over there. I just went and washed them off. And this is my pre Presto. I guess it's a Presto. It says Dehydro. I don't know who made it. 
food you dehydrator. And it's just a simple one that I got from Walmart. And we're gonna layer our leaves. Just space them out. I have four layers, so I have enough room to do it. These are gonna frizzle down to nothing, so don't be surprised when, you know, you only get like a half of a little jar of this stuff. But it's worth it because, you know, there are the the dehydrated the dehydrated um herbs are expensive the fresh herbs are spe expensive but the dehydrated ones well they're both expensive what am i talking about so i'm just going to pick this off i'm not going to dehydrate the stem the only thing i don't like about dehydrating this stuff is the sound the only reason why i took this stem is because the chickens or something broke it off so just hanging on by a limb, hanging on by a string. See that? That's the only reason why I broke that off. The, the plant's going back outside. It'll grow back. So I'm going to spread those out. Get a little bit more. I got more room. Doing things yourself, you know, it takes time. Well, actually, it doesn't because the dehydrator is going to do the rest of the work. All I got to do is stack it takes a little bit of time but it's worth it you know especially if you you know you're you're just sitting down and watching tv just do this plant the seeds water it dehydrate it yourself and then when you need basil you don't have to run to the supermarket and buy it you got your own you don't have to depend on anybody else you are you are becoming more and more self-reliant and less dependent on people giving you things, not giving you things, or making you buy things. Because you're paying for their time and, you know, they, I hate to say it, they spray everything now. Even if it comes in organic, they have those sprayers that spray overhead. And I'm not sure if that's water. I don't know what that stuff is. So if it's organic and it hits the shelf and you think you're buying organic, those little sprayers... Are, I, I know that they got to have preservative in it. So those vegetables last a long time. I remember when I was on a ship and this one lady, we order, um, it's called Chocolate Delight. And it's chocolate covered strawberries, all kind of fruit that's chocolate covered. Well, she was in the, in the, um, in the elevator complaining that the strawberries started molding. And I looked at it and I was like, that's because they're fresh. They're not sprayed. They'll mold quick on you if you don't put any kind of chemical on them she either said i never thought about that because she was taking it back up to the chef to complain i was like nope you gotta eat them if you order stuff like that and they're fresh and they're not sprayed with a bunch of chemicals and preservatives they're gonna they're gonna mold on you quicker so with this one and i'm saying this thing cost me maybe 35 40 dollars with this one, all I do is plug it in, and you're going to hear this in sound, and that's it. I'll show you when we dehydrate it in a couple hours. So this is the noise that it makes. If it's sealed, it should sound like this. I don't really, I mean, sometimes I find it annoying, depending on how my day is going, but normally I just ignore it. So I'll leave this here for a couple of hours, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so it's dehydrated. I'm going to pull this off. I had to plug it out in order for this thing to stop. I told you it's an inexpensive one, right? So we're going to take our leaves gently and put them in here in the jar. It's not going to fill up this jar. It's not going to make a dent in this jar when I crush them down. But you know what? We have more. We always have more. Let me start crushing it down. Make this thing sure it's in there. That's a good idea. Crush it with your hand and put it in the jar. God gives you tools and we just don't use them anymore. We, we have to use other things. Well, we think we have to use other things. We forget. We got the, the best tools right here on our bodies. Just 
sprinkle it out. That didn't take long, long. Maybe the dryer was going maybe tw two hours. And they're done. Now I don't have to buy dried basil. I have some. Remember, dried dried basil is more concentrated than wet basil or fresh basil. And you see why? See all of that? Made just that little bit. I'm basically done here. Down to my last, last little bit. Now a lot of people say, well, Jamerica, you know, is it worth it? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Basil in a bottle, the organic kind, about six, seven dollars. This cost me my time, a little bit of soil that I can reuse, and 25 cent seeds. And I got more basil in this little jar than I would have in one of the jars I buy from the supermarket that's in a glass jar. So all I have to do is mark this. Next time I need basil, I got it. So there we are. This is our dried basil. Happy! This is Jamerica 5288. Don't be afraid to plant your own basil and process it yourself. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope this um, explains it to you and shows you that a lot of this stuff is real simple. Real simple and easy to do. There you go.